Hello everybody, how are you doing? It's a pleasure again to see you here on Night School. I'm so excited, as usual, to bring you this episode, your next big move. How many of us are excited to get into the show? I know you are. I see the usual suspects already in the building. The people who are always in front of the class, they're here waiting for the value. And we have the late commerce who are still going to come somewhere in the middle of the presentation. But I'm hoping that this can be short. I hope this doesn't bite me later because I'm, I'm seldom brief because I have to explain and break certain things down that I think have to be explained. But that's okay. Nevertheless, we're going to have a great time here. I'm going to teach um, in detail how to figure out your next big idea. I have a lot planned for you. And uh, it's all written out here, outlined. And hopefully you have your notes, you'll take some notes, and maybe I'll take some questions. But for the next one hour plus or one hour, 45 minutes, however long it takes me to unveil this for you, I'm going to be doing my best to give you a systematic approach to finding what your next big move should be, what your next big idea is. So why am I talking about this topic today? Why this topic, your next big idea, tools for discovering your next big move? And that's because, well, Historically, towards the end of the year, like what we call in Nigeria, the ember months, even though I don't think October qualifies as an ember month, but we call it that anyway. So ember months are like September, October, November, December. In these months, people tend to start reviewing the, the entire year. What have I achieved? What have I accomplished? Am I closer to achieving my goals? Or this path that I'm on does not feel like it, but I can't get off of this path until I have a clear picture of where I should be going. And so people are thinking, like, how do I figure this out? And so I'm here to present you a method, a systematic method, and it's going to make sense to you. Trust me, it makes sense. Thoroughly researched by me, vetted by me, tested by me, and you're going to love it. So this is going to show you how a step-by-step -step approach for sifting through all the ideas out there, because you'll hear from this person and that person and you're going to get all confused. Someone once said that if you chase two rabbits, you'll catch no, you'll catch no one, right? So what is the step-by-step -step process of figuring out what it is you need to dive deep into? This is what I have for you. And of course, it's 2021. You cannot talk about discovering your next big idea without leveraging on the tools 
that the internet provides. So there are internet tools. Some of these tools, you already know these tools, but you do not know that you can use these tools in this way. Okay, so I'm going to be showing you some tools that you're already familiar with and how you can use the, the hidden functionality of these tools to discover new opportunities, new oases, new vistas, uncharted territories that you could use to explore your next big idea, all right? Do we all understand now why we are here and what you're going to be getting? So by the end of this uh, night school episode, uh, you are going to have a step-by-step -step framework for uncovering your next big idea. Not just that, but you'll be able to use this step-by-step -step framework for idea generation in any industry. I'll, be, I'll teach you how to uncover what the new business models are across any industry, whether you want to dive into cryptocurrency, if that's your thing, or you want to dive into the into virtual reality or like now Facebook has changed its name to Meta and it has unveiled its its new vision, which is not quite new, but they just unveiled it now. It's unveiled this vision of going into the metaverse and you're thinking, is that what I want to do? Is that what I want to specialize in? Or maybe you're into the regular, you know, what we know, like fashion and or furniture, whatever it is, this will be a step-by-step -step framework of getting into new territories and discovering where the gold is and what there belongs to you, all right? So without further ado, we're going to start now. But first of all, I want everyone to take the link that you got that brought you right here. Take that link and share it out. Invite your friends on WhatsApp, invite your friends on Telegram, on Facebook, on Instagram, and wherever else you live. If you live in the villages, send word out to your town crier tell them to go out on the streets of your village and start telling everyone that night school is starting all right send them all the url if you got to put up on a projector for the whole village to see do what you got to do get them in here i'll just take a sip of water for a few short minutes and when we get back i will be going live with the show so do not go anywhere i will be right with you stay with me now. <laughs> Okay, welcome back everybody. So I'm going to be relying in some areas, I'm going to be relying on the comment section to, to make some notes, okay? Um, if I were to be the host and I were to be having a guest, maybe I would have just allowed the guest to speak and I would help you guys put out notes on the screen, but I'm the one speaking and teaching, so I'm not gonna be able to be typing stuff on the screen. So those of you who are quick and are able to type things out on, you know, in the comments, for as many as I see, I'll be putting them up on the screen, okay? First timers in the house, thank you for coming. Adenike Promise, I see that it's your first time here. Good to see you. Welcome, welcome. You are welcome in the name of the Lord. Ushers, please give her the first time for Fofa and Zobo. Make sure that she feels welcome. Everyone who is here for the first time, welcome, welcome, welcome. I can't call you guys out by your name because we've got to get started. I'm so excited, man. I'm so excited. I'm, I'm going to be teaching you guys um, in a way that you have never heard before concepts and methods and frameworks that you have never ever in your life heard before and i think that's the that's a trademark of night school really all right if if something has been said before or taught before i'm not going to teach it that's not what night school is about 
it's got to be if it's coming from me if it's coming from night school it's got to be new it's got to be impactful it's got to be something that you are going to remember for the rest of your life so for those of you who only know me as a pepper dem young man on on instagram and you've never heard me speak before well this will be your baptism of fire and hopefully you'll go and spread the word anyway let's get down to business your next big move tools and frameworks for discovering your next big move or your next big idea. All right, so I'll give you a couple of um, notes that you have to just write, write down. These are just three points that came to me while I was scripting this out, okay? So just write this out, okay? Three characteristics of your next big move or your next big idea. Three characteristics of your next big idea. Number one, your next big idea, it does not have to be new. It does not have to be new. I know I shall do a new thing, <laughs> okay? But it does not have to be new. It could be new, but it does not have to be new. You can ride an existing wave and do it better than anyone else. I don't think I'm the first person ever to be on, on YouTube Live, you know, weekly. I don't think I am, but um, I'm riding on a wave that already exists. I'd not invent live streaming. All right, I'd not invent meeting online and doing virtual events. No, it doesn't have to be new. Okay, uh, number two, your next big idea is on the lips of a conversation you have not heard. I didn't say had, I said heard. Okay, your next big idea is on the lips of a conversation you have not heard. All right, and that's why you know those of you who are so religiously inclined, the Bible says what. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Yes, because you have not gotten into that conversation, okay? Your eyes have not heard, your eyes have not seen, your ears has it, have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man. Why has it entered your heart? Because you are locked up beside your house and you have not gone into the places that those conversations are being had. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're the one who is going to be partaking in that conversation, even though that's part of it. But sometimes the conversation might just be happening around you or in certain places, but you are yet to enter the venues where those conversations are being had. That could be your next big idea, okay? So those two things, number one, it doesn't have to be new. Number two, it's on the lips of a conversation you have not heard. Number three, it is in a location you have never been to. For those of you who are members of my Facebook community, Head Start Africa, for years and years and years, I've been drumming into your head because I know that you have been lied to for so many years. People have lied to you. All kinds of people have lied to you. That anywhere you are, God can bless you even under the palm tree in your village. They told you all kinds of lies, okay? Your destiny oftentimes is location sensitive. Your destiny oftentimes is location sensitive. And I, I don't want to, you know, I've, I've, I've beaten this horse to death multiple times before. All right. There, there, there are two things that, that govern the fruition of an idea. Two things. And that is time and space. Time and space. And space can be said to be a, a venue or a, a physical place. Okay. Time. So when I hear, some, when I hear people say that, oh, this person was ahead of their time. It means that they, the ideas that they brought forth were too early. And so what they were saying, people of their time were not able to understand them. And it might sound like a compliment, but it is not. It might sound like a compliment, but it is not. If they say someone, someone is ahead of their time, it means that because people of that time were unable to understand them, those people could not get rewarded for those ideas. Do you understand that? Because the people of the time could not understand them, they were unable to get rewarded for their ideas to the level that their genius deserves. That's one. I said time and space. So let's look at the space angle. There are some people who have fantastic ideas, but because that location is not ready for that idea, they will only clap for you, but they will not give you one naira. They will not give you one dollar. They will not give you a penny because they don't fully get it. And because of that, they will all clap for you. You are the one-eyed man in the land of the blind that is king. You're happy because everyone claps when you speak, but you're not going to get rewarded for your genius 
to the or even if you get rewarded, you will not get rewarded to the level, to the zenith that your genius deserves because you're in the wrong environment. And so those two things, time and space, very important. So I said that your, your next big idea is in a location you have not been to. All right. If you look at even the music industry in Nigeria, no matter how good you are, where must they come to? Ask any, anybody should know the answer. If you want to blow in Nigeria as a musical artist, where do they go to? They go to Lagos. So you don't fool yourself in any other states. You are wasting your time. You might start somewhere else, but you must eventually come and pay homage to Lagos. You might start in your Joss or your Port Harcourt or your Enugu. Very good. But if you want to blow internationally, you must come to Lagos. That everybody knows that. They don't argue it, okay? It is young people that have had no real-world experience that like to argue things they've not even experienced. I don't get it. I don't understand, all right? If older people in their 40s and 50s that have lived their lives are arguing, I can at least entertain that conversation. But when you see people that are under 25, they've not lived their father's and they're arguing, Enugu states can be great. I can make it here. I don't get it. What have you seen? What have you lived? <laughs> you're too young. You don't know what you're talking about. All right, it's just based on, on assumptions. All right, so you've got to understand. Now, I'm not saying it has to be Lagos per se, because again, it is industry sensitive. But you've got to find the location for your idea. Okay, if you are in the United States of America and you want to blow in the movie in in in, in the movie industry, everybody knows you got to go to Hollywood. I mean, you can make some good stints in some other states and cities, but if you want to really be known, you've got to be in Hollywood. If you're in tech and you want to be known, you've got to go to Silicon Valley. And if you if you go research, right, they will tell you that Silicon Valley is a very expensive place to live. It is freaking expensive. Same with Hollywood. Freaking expensive, but you see a lot of people are trooping in there to take their chances. So how much more you, you're in Nigeria, and you're, you're, you're hugging your Ebony state, you're hugging your Imo on your Enugu, and your time is passing you by. You've got to figure out what is the location. Okay, so three characteristics of your next big idea. Number one, it is not, it doesn't have to be new. Number two, it's on the lips of a conversation you haven't heard. Number three, it's in a location you have not been to. All right. And um, thank you very much, Raymond Okpani. Um, I, I, you just said something about environment versus location. I, I, I wrote about this some time ago. And let me quickly explain this because, I, because of this you just put on here. I'm going to explain environment versus location. Now, this difference between being in the right location and being in the right environment. Now, what I'm first of all advocating is that you be in the right location first, okay? So an example of a location is Lagos. It is happening in Lagos, be in Lagos. But we hear some people say things like, eh, I know somebody who has been in Lagos for the past five years and nothing has happened for them. Yes, it is very possible. They've been in the right location, but they've not been in the right environment. So you might be wondering, John, what are you talking about? Are you playing semantics? What is the difference between being in the right location and being in the right environment? Now, location is a geographical space that you've got to be in. But environment refers to the right people, places, and events that are able to incubate your idea. I'll take, I'll take that again. Environment refers to the right people, places, and events. People, places, and events all make up what we call what? The ecosystem, amongst other things, Okay people, places, events, and the ecosystem that is required to incubate your idea. So if you want to be a, a spoken word poet, for example, and you want the people to appreciate you and know you as a spoken word poet in Nigeria, where do you have to be? Everybody knows. It's Lagos. You can go and do sp spoken word poetry up in Kaduna. You might find one or two people who are you know, who appreciate that craft enough to clap for you, but you will never get rewarded to the peak of that profession. Why? There is no ecosystem for spoken word poetry there. So you'll find that you are the one that is giving and giving and giving and raising people, but you yourself are empty. You are being depleted continually of your emotional and intellectual resources, but you are not being refilled. And so, but when you are in the right ecosystem, you will meet people that are way smarter than you, that are way more accomplished than you. And so while you are pouring into other people, you have those who have gone ahead of you, those who are better than you, that are also pouring into you. So you come to Lagos for the first time, for example, that's when you'll realize that you're not the only spoken word poet in Nigeria. You're, you're probably not even the best because you'll find so many fantastic talents and iron sharpens iron. 
you're going to learn from these people and you're going to get really good. The same thing if you're a programmer, if you're a techie, um, if you want to be a musician, you've got to go to where it is happening. All right. So um, that is it. That is it uh, when it comes, when I, I talk about environment versus location. So I was talking about the three characteristics of your next big move or your next big idea. Three things. Number one, it doesn't have to be new. Number two, it's on the lips of a conversation you haven't heard. Uh, number three, it is in a location you've not been to. This location thing, I'm going to come back to it uh, towards the end of this. It's an, it's an idea. I, I'm going to expand on this in a different point um, as we proceed. All right. I'll come back to it. All right. Now, real quickly, let me give you a couple of superpowers that you need because I'll come back to these superpowers. You need these four superpowers if you are going to succeed in this new decade with whatever idea that it is. You need these four things. And maybe, maybe per, perhaps uh, I'll write down a fifth one. Uh, this, hold on a sec. Let me just, let me just write it down because one just, one just came to me. Um, there we go. All right. Number one is reading. And I, by the way, this is not mine originally. I got this from a man named Naval Ravikant. Some of you know who he is. He's on Twitter with the handle at Naval. Very brilliant um, business mind and great business philosopher. He's on Twitter at Naval. Follow him. So um, to him, there are these four super, according to him, there are these four superpowers that you need in this next decade. And they are what? Reading, writing, speaking, and programming. Don't be afraid of programming. I'll, I'll break that down for you. All right. Reading. There is so much information on the Internet. But you will hear people say things like, I'm, I, you know, I don't really like to read books. Reading books is boring. Man, that is not something you want to say for yourself or affirm. It is not something you want to affirm at all. All right. If you are able to read, you'll be able to consume information very quickly in this competitive economy. Number one is reading. Number two is writing. In this day and age, if you are able to articulate your ideas in writing, it is a superpower, very powerful. Number three is speaking. Gone are the days when you could hide behind your books and say that I'm a better writer than speaker. No, your fantastic ideas, when you get your big ideas, you've got to be able to get people on board. Whether you are convincing an audience like I'm doing now, I'm speaking to everybody now about, I'm, and I'm communicating my ideas in, 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 in speaking, through speaking, or whether you're speaking to a smaller group of people that are supposed to be your investors, or you're trying to build a team, either way, you are going to have to learn how to persuade people to your points of view in speaking. So for as many people as listening to me right now, you've got to understand that this public speaking thing that you per perhaps have been running away from, you are, have, you, you are going to have to acquire this skill. It has met you now. <laughs> this, this is that bridge. You said you would cross when you get there, okay? When we get to that bridge, we'll cross it. You have come to that bridge now. You have to cross it. So you need to acquire the skills of public speaking. And depending on what platforms, if you're going to be doing it in person or post-pandemic now, we've had to be able to do public speaking on camera. Before the pandemic, it was on stage. You had to build stage presence. Now, post-pandemic, we have had to build on camera, camera presence, Okay. So for as many times as you have to practice this, but you need this in your arsenal, the stage has moved from physical venues to Zoom, or in our case now, it's on YouTube. So being able to convince people of your ideas, because you cannot make your ideas come to life on your own. You've got to bring people on board with it. And how do you bring people across that bridge? You've got to communicate. And how do you communicate? It's either in speaking or in writing or both. You cannot escape it, okay? So reading, writing, speaking, and number four, according to Naval, is computer programming. But um, I wouldn't just say computer programming. I would say you can substitute that computer programming with other things, all right? He believes that computer programming, yes, but I think that you can substitute that for other things. Listen, guys, in 2021, you have, listen, being able to find what you need on the internet is a superpower, okay? I will share my screen as we progress. I will share my screen and show you some fantastic tricks. You guys love when I show these tricks, and I'm going to show you guys that, right? But you've got to be able 
you've got to be able to get on the internet and find what you want. Even if you are not a programmer, you cannot program, you should be able to at least put certain things together. Everybody should be able to put a website together on its own. Everybody should be able to set up an online store on their own without calling anybody. Everybody should be able to, to run their own ads on their own without calling anybody, all right? I broke this down in, I think, a previous Night School episode. Just go to my YouTube channel after this broadcast. What was the title of that episode? I think it was um, Internet Business Mogul. I, you, okay, look for, look check, check on my YouTube channel. This Internet Business Mogul Part 1 and Part 2. I broke down these skills of the new economy, and you guys are going to need that. You can use that in place of computer programming. So when you have your big idea, in 2021 and beyond, people want to see it represented on a website. They want to see a website. And there is a way that we have been programmed to expect websites to look. Don't give websites your own definition. You are going to fail woefully. You have to be able to create websites in the way that we have been, we have been programmed to see quality websites. Okay, So that is a skill that you have to have. You have to also be able to create like an online store if your idea is to sell stuff online. You should create an online store that looks like what we know as a valuable or reputable online store. So whether you're going to be using WooCommerce or Shopify, whatever it is, you got to figure it out. I'll show you how to figure these things out as we progress. I'm still hanging around the periphery. Okay, so these are the um, these are the four superpowers that you need to have. And now I'm, I'm, I must say this: we all know what the Matthew effect is. To he who has, more will be given. To he who does not have, even that which he has will be taken away from him. Why am I saying that? The more skills that you have, the more powerful that you will be. I'm saying this and emphasizing this because a lot of times people come on these broadcasts and they hope I will say things like how to blow on the internet even if you are not techie. Uh -uh. Don't be a thief. <laughs> techie is the language of this new economy. And I feel even... I feel weird even talking about why you should be techie now when Mark Zuckerberg has unveiled Meta and they're doing virtual reality and augmented reality and Africans are still asking Stone Age questions like, eh, sir, which one should I use that will not consume data? You are in the Stone Age, yo. I'm sorry, there's no easy way to say it. All right? Let me, see, let me tell you, when these people are creating technology, they are not thinking of Africa. You have to think about yourself for yourself and enable yourself. Your government is not thinking about you. I hope you know. The, words, the world is talking about the metaverse. They're talking about the new world. Facebook has even been, become so emphatic by changing its entire name. They are moving forward. They are not thinking about you. All the developed countries that have 5G and they have the enabling environments to get their citizens to become co-creators in this new world. You don't even have that. All right. So you've got to take these things seriously. Don't be asking Stone Age questions like, hey, sir, hey, but I'm not too techie. Can I still do this? I hate it. I'm telling you, I sell a lot of online courses and people sometimes DM me some questions like, sir, this is your course. I'm not too techie. Can I still enter? It annoys me because you don't know this, the, 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 the stranglehold, the demonic stranglehold you are under. Africa, you are endangered. You don't know. You have no idea. But let's not go into that. Let me just talk about the ideas I came to um share with you today but i just said that to say this you have to be techie all right you have to be techie at least on a fundamental level being able to figure out how to put together what you need if all you even know how to do is to be able to get on these freelance websites like freelancer.com or upwork.com to talk to a program and say hey this is my idea how much will it cost to put it up and then you pay that person manage your project and get it delivered that is a big win, all right? But let's move on. Um, let us move on. So now we have talked about what are the characteristics of, of your next big idea. I said it doesn't have to be new. It's on the lips of a conversation you've never had, and it's in a location you've not been to. I also talked about four superpowers. There are actually five. Four superpowers um, of the new economy, reading, writing, speaking, um, programming, or computer skills. And the last one, which is not in any of these things, I just added it now, is called focus all right it is called focus and why am i talking about focus because there is a lot of information overload on the internet i look at some of you you are following ten thousand people what are you getting from ten thousand people that are laughing and posting photos of their food 
All right. Now, the, the right now, the problem we are facing is not lack of information or lack of access to information. The only problem now is excess information. And so the number one superpower is going to be focus because if it's information, we have that in abundance. But now it is the intellectual and emotional wherewithal to focus and not be distracted, becoming indistractable. I think that's the title of the book becoming indistractable in this new economy and saying, okay, this is what I want to learn. I'm going to focus on this. When I open Instagram, I'm not going to be pulled in this direction or that direction. I will do what I came here to do and I'm bouncing. And so that's why focus is a very powerful thing. And I'm going to leave that alone and um, get down into this. Now, when we're talking about your next big idea, you have to be able to answer three questions. Okay, three questions. Number one, what are you already good at? Sometimes it's going to connect with something you already have. Either something you are good at or something you already have. I'm sure some of you have heard about SWOT analysis, strengths, weakness, opportunities, and threats, right? What are your strengths? And your strength is not only from the place of ability, it's also from a place of resourcefulness. How resourceful are you? What are the resources that are available to you? Those of you who are biblically inclined, you know the story of Moses, you know, parting the Red Sea, and he was asking God, like, hey, what am I supposed to do now? And God said, what? What do you have in your hand? And so some of you have to itemize those things. What do you have in your hand? And it doesn't have to be the most obvious things. It can be the most obvious things. It can be the things that you don't even realize. Connections is a resource. Do you have connections? Who do you know? All right. What do you know? Who do you know? What do you know? Okay. Sometimes it could be that you have rich parents. Don't let anybody make you feel guilty because maybe your parents are rich. You say, hey, your parents are rich. Yeah, I know. You know, people tend to make people feel guilty for coming from wealth. But if you have that, it's a huge advantage. It can make your journey easier. So don't feel guilty about it. Own it and use it. Maximize it. Okay. So what do you have in your hand? Itemize everything. Write and feel as many paragraphs or pages as you need to what do you have what skills do you have what connections do you have who is in your network that you're not maximizing um what are the resources you have do you have access to capital do you have people you can raise money from i um shola adesa king was on this broadcast a couple of weeks ago and she was talking about the different kinds of um i think it was different kinds of assets we're talking about relational assets okay and and that was a fantastic one there's a replay of that you can look for the episode with uh, Shola Desaki somewhere on this channel. It's right there. It's free. Okay. So what do you have in your hand? That's number one. Okay. Second question is, what do people compliment you about? Sometimes we are the worst people to assess ourselves. Okay. Sometimes we can be the worst people to assess ourselves by ourselves. And so you have to ask people or you have to figure out what do people compliment me on? Okay. Biblically inclined, again, if you are, like Jesus Christ was talking to his disciples and they said, who do men say I am? Who do you say I am? What do people say that you can do pretty well? Some of you people say, wow, yeah, 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 yeah. I like the way you talk. Yeah, you have a, yeah, are you an OAP? Do, do you, you, you have the way of talking that, you know, or, oh, wow, you, you, are, you sound really inspirational or motivational. You have this, this thing about your voice or maybe you can cook and people say yo man that jollof rice is man and it's firewood flavor you know so what do people compliment you on you got to itemize that down number those are two number now the last one number three what do you do no not the last one it's just the third one right because they're four the third one is what do you do so easily that you know time just passes without you realizing okay the things that get you into your flow state more easily than most People complain about that thing, complain about that thing. They find it hard to, to, to make it work in that particular field or at that particular task, but you find that you do it easily and it just gives you joy. You're good at it. What do you do so easily? That is a clue. And number four, what makes you emotionally agitated when you see it done poorly? All right, number four, what, it, what makes you emotionally agitated when you see it done poorly. Sometimes you guys are watching television or you're watching a newscaster and the newscaster 
uses a wrong word or mispronounces a word and you're like you are yeah, yeah no 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 these people are not excellent they have to do this thing better yeah that is a clue as to where your next big idea could be coming a problem that you can solve why is it that you yourself were agitated by that thing but everybody else sees it and they're they're moving on they're living their lives they don't really care that much okay the fact that you care so much about it could be a clue all right so that is it those are the, are the four questions that you need ask now why are those four questions very important because when you understand what you're good at what you do easily what you love what people compliment you about what you hate what you care so much about that you want to change when you discover what those things are your work is cut out for you now because you will have to be able to learn deeply about these things okay so now the next stage we are going to is how do you learn how do you learn many of us just you know we want to learn we want to be geniuses we want to be fantastic at certain things but we've got to figure out how do you learn so that you can play to your strengths all right there are four types of learners okay four types of learners or four different ways in which people are wired to learn okay number four, there are four things number one we have visual learners, all right? Two, we have auditory learners, okay? Three, we have kinesthetic learners. And four, we have those who read through reading and writing. Are you getting me, all right? We've got four different types of learners or learning methods. One is visual learners, two is auditory learners, three is kinesthetic, and number four is through reading and writing. So let me explain these things. Number one, visual learners. These are people who have to see something to be able to learn it very quickly to them seeing is believing even though not in a, in, in, a, in a literal sense but there are those who learn through diagrams and through graphs and through as we say on the internet infographics or maybe very beautiful cartoons or if they're children maybe through comic books and things that are just visual and colorful if that is the way that you learn you have to note that down okay number two is auditory learners okay that those are the people who learned best through sound okay most of you here on night school are auditory learners because you have to hear something being explained to you and that light bulb just comes up you're like wow that makes sense to me okay so when you can when you learn better easily or quicker through a video or just an audio in any way that audio is being transmitted to you that is how you learn. You're an auditory learner, okay? Or number three, we have kinesthetic learners. Kinesthetic, that involves your body. These are people who like to be involved in a certain thing for them to learn. So they're the kind of people who like to do it with you while you are teaching them, okay? So don't tell me how to fix a car. Invite me to join you in fixing this car and I'm going to learn it as we go. Or, or if you're teaching public speaking, some people, yeah, you have taught me how to speak well in public, but I'm going to only be able to be able to, to learn it faster if you bring me on stage, have me speak, and give me instant feedback, all right? So those are the kinds of people, kinesthetic learners. And then finally, those who learn through reading and writing, like they, they learn better when they are reading books, all right? Some, I, I think I'm a, I'm a blend of all four in varying proportions but i love to read books sometimes when they are they're you know, in paperback or in hardcover or even on kindle okay now i'm going to be teaching you how to maximize these four learning methods using some internet tools but how do you read do you read through do you learn through books i love to learn through books sometimes i get bored with books and i switch to my auditory learning style i just look for videos or audios that i can use to learn i love to learn with podcasts and the like okay so i do you learn through reading and writing and also there's i remember when we when i went through nlp class i think sometime in 2016 or so we were taught about how writing down something could help deepen the memory of that thing so we would read something and just we were told to copy it out by hand not typing you have to handwrite everything so that it would burn the memory of that exercise into our minds. So there are people like that who learn better by reading, not just reading, but they have to write it out, okay? And even though this one is not included here, 
there are some people who learn better when they are teaching that thing okay when you look when you when you when you read something you learn it once when you teach it to somebody else you learn it twice so that is why it's important that when you acquire a skill newly you have to find opportunities to teach that skill very important guys very important all right now let's jump into the learning methodologies and how you can use the internet to facilitate these to facilitate your learning remember we are still trying to figure out what our next big idea is we don't know what it is yet all right we don't know what it is we're still we're still trying to figure out what our next big idea is so we're still trying to figure it out as we proceed i'll show you how to now dig deep when you figure out what your next big idea is how do you now dig deep and you know start digging for the gold in it but right now we're still talking about how do you learn okay so number one um if you are a visual learner one of your best friends is going to be slideshare okay is that the name i hope i, hope I got the name right because i I need to verify slideshare is the name okay so i'm going to just um share my screen because some of you are kinesthetic learners you want to learn it with me <laughs> you want to join me in this I'm, I'm going to share my screen and show you what i'm looking at ladies and gentlemen uh let me do this and that all right now so here is slideshow, okay? This is very good for those of you who are visual learners. Please turn your phone to landscape mode so that, you know, the whole thing is expanded and you can see this stuff, okay? All right, so this is slideshare. For those of you who are visual learners, they make do with a lot of infographics and slideshows. It is a gold mine. So let's say you want to learn about cryptocurrency. I'll just come here and type crypto or let me just be let me just go into say bitcoin for example i don't know anything about bitcoin i just searched bitcoin here on the on the search bar all right let's uh, i hope you guys can see this though okay so i'll just search bitcoin um let me refresh this because these things are not showing properly okay i don't know why this thing is refusing to load correctly but it's all good um so we'll just look at all the presentations here um let me or let me click on um or let me type introduction to bitcoin maybe it would give me better results oh fantastic better you see that way better so now it's showing me better results because i was a bit more specific introduction to bitcoin right you can i'll you know uh, i'll click on okay let me see so usually you can look at how many slides each one has they generally have a rating but i'll just click on anyone i'll click on this one and i can start viewing it allows you to download to view offline for those of you who want to save your data too so you know you let me zoom in too whoops that was too much so you can just go slide by slide what is money you know and you know they're going through the whole presentation presentation so you can see the picture so those, those of us who are visual learners are going to really um benefit from this you can see how many views this has and what date this was uploaded so that can tell you how relevant this is based on the date okay let me go to another one This one says introduction, Bitcoin is still very old. Now, another hack you can use, okay, is that to get something that is very relevant to you, you can look for people who used their presentation for a keynote, okay? So let's say Bitcoin keynote. Because some people who go and speak at events like to upload their keynote speech here, okay? So here we go. So this is a advanced group. There were some events and they were teaching about it. All right, this one says Bitcoin, blockchains, and financial crime. You see this? So you'll find a lot here. Bitcoin, the truth is here. Bitcoin and the sharing economy. This one was at what? Coin Congress USA 2014. You see? So you are able to tap into um, presentations and slides that were shared at these events that held... Um, 
somewhere in the world, okay? So you can see the whole thing. Uh, okay, what did I just hit now? Let me just go back. You can see the whole presentation and so on. Okay, so this is very useful for those of us who are uh, visual learners. Now, for those of us who are auditory learners, there is a fantastic tool. No, darling, I don't want to sign up. There's a fantastic tool I'm going to show you right now, and it's called archive.org, all right? If you're if you an, now those of you who want to learn through auditory, okay, so this is the Internet Archive, okay? It's a nonprofit library of millions of free books, movies, software, music, websites, and more, okay? Now, we're not here for movies or any of those things. We're here for things that we can learn uh, from, okay? So now, if you are an auditory learner, you're somebody who likes to, to learn by listening, you can just come somewhere here, click on the audio, and I'll just go to LibriVox. LibriVox is a free archive of audiobooks, totally free, all right? Totally free. You can come here, they have thousands and thousands of audiobooks on many different topics, and they are totally free to access and listen to, and you can even download legally. It is very legal. You can do what you want with it. All right. Now, also, there is the video section. I'm going to come to video. Uh, let's go to. So, if, if I click on video, you see multiple things here. Uh, there's something that there's one category. I'll come to computers and technology. Okay. If I click on computers and technology, you're going to see a lot here. Okay. Um, you can see documentaries. Some are old, some are new, but there's so much on the Internet Archive. Um, what else here? You can also see Internet events. There's, there's a subcategory for, let me see, Internet events. Let's see if that shows up. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Internet events. So I'll click on Internet events. And a lot of events that have happened on the internet that were uploaded to the internet, there you have it. There's a ton you can find. Uh, what is this? A2K in India and America. Let's see what the quality of this is. I'm going to just click it and. All right, so let me hit play. So you probably won't hear the audio because I'm just trying to play it on here. Why aren't you playing? Anyway, pause, that's fine. But you can easily download it and get all the details here. So it's 2017 and so on, okay? So that is this, so that's, that is called archive.org. Archive.org, someone just type it in so I can keep on moving, so we can keep the time. Archive.org, it has all of this. For those of you who like to get eBooks too, it also has an ebook library, okay? Let's see, all books, all right? There's an open library here where you can get books. There's over 5 million books here on archive.org. You can find very old books that are um, hard to find. Just scroll and find, you can search. And if you come back here to books, where is that books? Books, all right? You will see the top American, the top libraries. It's American libraries, Canadian libraries, Universal Library. There is just so much. Let's go to American libraries. Let's see what we can find there. All right. So you can see the Boston Library Consortium, California Digital Library, Getty Research Institute, Boston Public Library. This is the whole. This is the library of the internet. All the universities. But I put up the libraries here for you, the U.S. National Library of Medicine. It is all at your disposal. You decide what you want to do with it, okay? So that's that. I want to move on to other things. <laughs> How many of you are getting value so far? Are you getting value? Are you learning something? All right. So um, people said, what is the name for the visual learning? It's called Archive. Archive.org. I think it's .org. Yes, Archive.org, okay? I mean, sorry, thank you, Andrew. It's SlideShare. SlideShare is a visual. It's the one for auditory learning that is archive.org. Thank you very much for that, Andrew. Thank God I looked at the comments. 
Okay, so the one for the for the visual learning is slide share. That's it. Okay. All right. Now let's move on to uh, reading and writing. I already mentioned the one for you know where we get books from open libraries all over the internet on archive.org. You can find all kinds of books there on any topic, any topic. Uh, but the problem with that approach really is that, in my experience, in my personal experience, you would find books there that are a bit old. So if you are researching material that dates back in time, it will be valuable to you. But if you're searching for present technology, you might not find it there. So anything about VR or AR, online marketing, you might not get it there. You know, e-commerce, you might not find something that is very relevant for today in there, but it has its place. So um, in the next se se session, I'm going to be showing you tools that would help you dig for ideas that are relevant for today, okay? What I just showed you now is how to dig for ideas that you know have been around for a long time, like medicine, like law, like maybe furniture, engineering, immigration, um, law enforcement, politics, government, science, astronomy, and so on. So that's where archive.org and those open libraries can help you. But if you're talking about ideas for now, like e-commerce and online marketing, and um, the Internet of Things, present future technology, then you know you want to stay tuned for this next segment. All right. So this next segment is titled "How to Quickly Get the General Idea for Something That You Are Interested in." You're not diving deep yet, but you found something that you think you might like. All right. I think I might like fashion. I think I might like fashion. Yeah. I think I might like. Uh, e-commerce i'm not sure yet but i think i just might like it yeah or, or, or i think i might like podcasting uh, content creation or creating videos on youtube i think i might like it i'm not sure if i want to specialize there yet i think i might like it i don't know anything about it but it looks like i might like it how do i get the general idea of that industry so i can see whether it is for me or not okay there are some tools that would help you quickly get the general idea and then you can decide whether this is something you want to specialize in or not. All right. So I'm going to be talking about this as soon as I get back from the break. I'm going to take a very short break now, about 30 seconds. And when I come back, I'm going to be showing you how to quickly get the general idea of any industry. Don't go anywhere. Meanwhile, take the link that brought you here and share it to your friends, whether they're on WhatsApp, on Telegram on Instagram, on Facebook, or through the town crier in your village. What matters is that people get it, all right? So share it out, and in 30 seconds, once I've been refreshed, I will continue with the second half of this broadcast. Don't go anywhere. This is going to be a smooth ride until the end. See you soon. Welcome, 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 welcome back, baby. We're back to your next big move. Tools and frameworks for discovering your next big idea. 
So far, we have talked about three questions to ask for uncovering what your next big move um, could be. Um, we talked about four or five superpowers that you need to have in the new economy. Um, we talked about three characteristics of your next big idea. We talked about learning methods because once you discover what that is, you've got to learn. You've got to update yourself because what got you here wouldn't take you there, right? You've got to learn. I showed you the types of learning methods we have and tools that can help you accelerate your learning depending on which one you belong to. And um, now we are at how to quickly get the general idea on any industry, how to quickly get the general idea in any industry, in any industry. But one more thing, um, there's one thing I, 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 I skipped or I, I forgot to mention when it comes to reading, those of you who learn through reading. Now, these days, it is a lot easier to get our learning material online. So like especially those of us who travel and we move around and buying a lot of books just makes your bags a lot heavier. You know, they like take, imagine this book and having a hundred of this. How are you going to move this from place to place? You won't be wondering which books to take, for, to take with you when you're moving or when you're traveling. Or you just want the convenience of having your books on your mobile device, whether it's a phone or it is a, what is that thing? Okay, I was looking for my Kindle. I can't, it's not around me here. Okay, cool. Whether it's a, mo a mobile phone or it's a tablet or a Kindle, you want that convenience, okay? Now, just go to the previous episodes we had. We had the Internet Business Mogul, I think, one and two. Look into those two, and I think I broke this down more. But here's the thing I love about, um, or here's something that you need to know about reading books on mobile devices. I know that there are multiple ebook readers, and especially those of you who have Android phones, you like to use those ebook readers. But those ebook readers are often not good enough because of one vital functionality that most of them do not have. There is one thing that most ebook readers do not have, okay? Android users love to have multiple kinds. And trust me, when I was in an Android phone too, I had all these ebook readers that they can read ebooks well. But here's the problem. How many of you have loaded your books, have loaded your phones with ebooks? And then when that phone gets stolen or it's lost or it's damaged, you have no way of getting your books back. How many of you have how many of you have been in that position before? I have, and it was so hurtful. All right. Or you have it on your laptop where you read it from, or and then something happens to your laptop, either it crashes or it gets stolen, and boom, your entire library is gone. That's one. Number two. Now how many of you have these apps that help you leave notes on particular passages that were important to you? Like they help you to underline or to outline a particular line and leave notes on it, all right? Some of those apps actually provide that. But it's even a greater pain when not just your books, but your bookmarks and your notes on those books are gone once your device is stolen. And so that is why everybody needs to be able to use the Kindle app. Why the Kindle app? Because, why the Kindle app? So some people are talking about Moon Reader and Co. That's all good. But why am I advocating the Amazon Kindle app? Because they have this thing called the cloud functionality. And this cloud reader functionality it's available to you whether you paid Amazon or not. Aha, many people don't know this, all right? It is available to you whether you paid Amazon or not. Some of you think that you have to buy the app from Amazon or you have to buy the book from Amazon first. No. Ige how? There is a way, okay? So, personally, I started out buying all my books from Amazon. All right, I started out buying all my ebooks from Amazon. So if you buy from Amazon the Kindle version, you can install the Kindle app on your phone and then the book gets to your phone. Now, when I read a book and I outline, leave my notes on the book, in case that device gets missing or I need to replace my device, all I need to do is get a new device, 
sign into my Amazon Kindle account and it downloads all my books back to the new device. It downloads those books back to the new device along with my notes, my outlines, and all my bookmarks. That is what the Kindle app has that most other apps do not have. Now, the question you might be asking me is, wow, John, fantastic. I never knew that was possible. So that's all good for those who bought their books from Amazon, but I bought my own eBooks, my PDFs and EPUBs and co. I bought them from a different vendor. Is there a way I could import them to the Amazon Kindle app and still use this functionality? Uh, is that your question? If that is your question, then you are very smart. That's a great question to have. And it is possible with Amazon. But here's how to make it work. Depending on where you bought your, your eBooks from, uh, they are going to come in certain kinds of formats. Maybe you bought a PDF from someone who sells in PDFs or whatever format that they, they, they sell in, right? Depending on what, they, what format they, 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 they sent it to you in, you have to be able to... Thank you, Elijah, for sending me money. I love it when people send me money. Um, one pound forty nine. I appreciate you, man. Thank you. Um, so depending on what format they sent that ebook, you have to convert it to Amazon's format. Okay, you have to be able to convert it to Amazon's format first. Amazon has a format. Okay, and you need to be experienced to so even know that they have a format in the first place. Amazon has a file format that they accept for you to be able to import ebooks into their platform and that format is called mobi dot mobi all right m o b i dot mobi now here's the thing most thought leaders and co that sell ebooks generally don't give you ebooks in that format it usually would be in epub or pdf so you need to be able to convert that ebook, whether it's in PDF or in EPUB or whatever format, you need to be able to convert that ebook to dot mobi. How do you convert it? You can do it for free using this tool online. It is free. It is called Zamzar. Zamzar.com. All right. So when you go to Zamzar.com, you'll be able to convert any kind of ebook to Amazon's accepted format and it's totally free all right so you'll be able to convert whether it's a pdf or thank you very much pascal appreciate that you will to convert whether it's a pdf or or an epub whatever it is you really convert it to dot mobi all right now once you have the dot mobi version what do you do with that how do you import it now one thing everybody should know if you have the amazon kindle app installed on your mobile phone whether it's your Android phone or your iOS device, what you got to do is open your, your Kindle app and go to settings. When you check your settings, just be, scroll down and look very carefully under your settings. You'll see that everyone has a Kindle email address. You see the funny looking Kindle email address there. What you've got to do now is send that .mobi ebook as an attachment to that Kindle email address. In less than five minutes, that attachment ebook will be downloaded to your Kindle device. Give me a round of applause. Give me a round of applause. I'm sure many of you did not know that. And those of you who knew it, you kept it to yourself. You did not share. <laughs> so give me a round of applause. I deserve it. Matter of fact, don't just give me a round of applause. Give me money. Look for the donation button somewhere on this screen. Somewhere at the bottom of this screen. I think somewhere in the chat window. You see a dollar sign. Click that dollar sign and give me money. I demand that money. That is your offering. Don't tell me, sir. Thank you. When I hammer one plot of land for a bejuleki for you. No. Give it to me now. <laughs> all right. So that is how you get it done. All right. Once you get it in the dot .mobi format using Zamzar, just send it, send it as an email attachment to your Kindle email address. If you want to find your Kindle email address, just go to open your Amazon Kindle app, go to your settings, you'll see your Amazon email address there. Any ebook you send to that email address, provided it's in .mobi format, will be automatically synchronized and downloaded to your cloud Kindle library and onto your device. Now, 
any notes, annotations, bookmarks, and so on that you make on that ebook will also be saved to your Amazon Cloud library. If anything happens to your device, all you got to do is get your new device, sign in, and everything you've put up there will be re-downloaded to your device. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that fantastic? <laughs> Teresa, you know how they, did, they do me. Whenever I say that you pay their tithes, they'll be laughing. Like I'm joking here. Like I'm joking. Okay, so that is that. Uh, I think um, Chi Chi Barnabas says you can also use Caliber to convert books to Mobi. All right, good. If you can use that and it works, fantastic. I'm all for it. All right, so that's it about the learning styles and tools that can help you accelerate your learning using whatever learning style that works for you. Now, how do you quickly get the general idea of any industry? All right, now, I'm going to do something practical. I want someone to type in the comments, all right? I want someone to type in the comments. Okay, um, okay so someone said the Kindle app is not available on Google Play. I think it's a Nigerian thing. So I don't know how many of you follow me on Instagram. A lot of you follow me on my Instagram. Well, I don't post a lot on my Instagram feed, but I, I rant a lot on my Instagram stories. So you may have heard me talk a lot on my Instagram stories about the third world fence. When I say that they're not building the new world for you third world Africans, you think I'm being, um, I'm being demotivational or I'm being pessimistic. I know what I've seen that you have not seen. You can't, get, you can't use your empty motivation to argue with me, all right? I'm, I mean, I'm not talking to you right now, but... I'm just talking about the kinds of reactions that I typically get from those who don't see where the world is going and that Africa is left behind, all right? Something as fundamental as Amazon Kindle is not on the Nigerian Google Play Store. But you get how you can, you can hack it. Forget that thing. I'm not, I, I, I don't apologize for hacking because I, I think it is highly racist for a country of over 150 million or 200 million people to be excluded from such facilities, all right? So anyway, there are tools that you can use to download any app on the Google Play Store, even if they don't allow your country, all right? Um, I used to know one of those things, but I'm no longer, I'm no longer in Nigeria, so I've, I've escaped that fence. Um, so I don't remember right now, but hold on, let me just search quickly. Um, I will find it right now for you. I just don't remember what it is anymore. Let me see. Aha, I found it. I found it. Let me just verify that it's correct, and I'll put it in the comments for you. So this tool will help you download any app on the Google Play Store. Um, in case your country is being restricted. Uh, okay. Yeah, people are saying VPN. Yeah, I think VPN might work, but it doesn't always work, though. But this is one way that uh, you can do it. So this is the URL. Make a screenshot so you can use this later. This Go to this URL. You, okay? Go to this URL. You'll be able to take the... You'll be able to now search for the app in the Play Store. Or you can just search it on this URL. And you can download the APK. But for you to be able to install APKs on your Android device, you have to go to somewhere in your settings and enable uh, apps from unknown sources. There's a, there's, a, there's a setting you have to enable on your Android device to be able to install APK files. You can install the, you can get the Amazon Kindle APK file and install on your device and any other app that you are being excluded from. Use this um, technique to bust the third world fence. And if for any reason this does, this does not work for you, there are many other tools. Just go and search on Google. Search Google for APK downloader. There are many other ones. These are not the only guys that have it, okay? Remember I told you guys at the beginning that a major superpower, even if you're not a computer programmer, a major superpower is to be able to find what you need on the internet, even if you're not a programmer. But if you are able to Google and be resourceful and look for tools that can accelerate your progress, it's a major superpower, okay? So this works. If it doesn't work, you know, for any reason, even though it does, just, um, you know, dig some more you'll find an alternative that will work for you okay anyway how to quickly get the general idea so i want to do something practical now i want someone to tell me um okay samuel edit is saying something else um, i don't think you need a vpn or hack it set a different country on your gmail doing registration and you might be able to access files not open for nigeria well 
and again, it says might, you know, so try it out. Whatever works for you, um, good for you. Now, Ugochuku Chukuma says, what about App Store? Um, for App Store, I hope this is not against YouTube's terms and conditions so they don't take down my video. Anyway, I think if I say that this video is for educational purposes only, I should be free. <laughs> anyway, for the App Store, for if you have an iOS device, what you will need to do is to create a new Apple ID, all right? You can't use it. You, you can't use a VPN to hack this one. You have to create a new Apple ID, and uh, and then set your country to the United States. Set your country to the United States, and then perhaps you might need to add a payment method that is that has a United States billing address. And so anybody who uses Get Barter, Barter.me. Anybody who uses Get Barter, Barter gives you the virtual credit cards or virtual debit cards and with those virtual debit card debit cards they come with a us address so when you put that as a us address and all that that's it for you you will be able to download apps from the us app store that of course are not available on the nigerian app store i told you guys i keep on ranting to you guys on my instagram on especially on head start africa the facebook group that these guys are trying to exclude you. You think I'm just yelling. It's there, there are many apps you will not even see on the Nigerian App Store. Okay, even when I was in Nigeria, I don't mess around with the Nigerian App Store. I've always been on the US App Store so I can get the best of the best. Okay, so this is how you can do it for those of you who uh, need to get that done. Someone says, and a US number for the Apple account. Well, you don't need a US number. You, you don't need a phone number. You just need an address, uh, you know, like a proper zip code and correct billing address. You don't need a U.S. number, but if you need a U.S. Ad number that and you don't have a U.S. number, simply go to Skype.com. Okay, you can go to Skype.com, and if it's that important to you, you can buy a U.S. number, so that anybody who calls that U.S. number, it will forward that call to your Nigerian number. If you're in Uganda or Kenya, whatever it is, you can forward it there. All right. Uh, so, and it's, it's not very expensive. It's very cheap. I think between five or ten dollars or so, you can get a U.S. number if that is needed but i don't really think that us a us number is needed but in case it is that's how to do it see i'm going to give you guys two uh, you know tips that we're not even in the curriculum based on the questions that i'm getting <laughs> sure you guys can see that i don't take for this thing i don't really take for this thing so <laughs> it's a, it was a huge toss. i i i got to a point in my life that i said you know what i'm getting older now i'm no longer in my 20s where I can be looking for hacks to get this done. I get that I'm, I'm, I'm getting too old for this crap. I'm done. <laughs> That's why I had to leave Nigeria. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not saying you have to, but I'm saying I had to be honest with myself that, John, you can't do this forever. <laughs> You're like, you going to cure this thing one time for all. So I was like, peace out, guys. Can't do this anymore. But anyway, this is still a hack that you can use. Um, so anyway, back to the next part of the curriculum, how to quickly get a general idea. So I, <laughs> I want to, <laughs> who, who is Femi? Why, 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 why are people wanting Femi in, in the comments? Is that Femi, Femi should be should careful. Okay. I, I can see what Femi said. <laughs> I can see what Femi said. <laughs> Femi, don't let the comment section get angry with you. All right. How to really get a general idea? I want to do a practical session now with someone. Okay. Just. So you tell me, tell me something, maybe a topic that you are somewhat interested in, but you know nothing about it. All right. So I can share my screen and show you how you can get the general idea. Okay. So I said, how does one get a US address? I just, I just told you, watch the replay. Okay. That's why you guys should listen carefully. And when it's break time, don't be leaving the broadcast and coming back because how the, the angel can just pass you by. Just <laughs> come back to it and. And you'll hear what I said about the US address. I mentioned it. Or maybe if somebody is very nice in the comments, you can put it in the in the comments for the for you. All right. So people are leaving. Let me see. Someone said learning management system. Someone said podcasting. Someone said white labeling, machine learning, data science. Okay. Um, let me take one. Maybe if we have time, I will take two. Um digital marketing is really wide. Okay. And it's pretty common. Let me look for something that is not really common. Um, affiliate marketing, movie directing. Uh, let me see. Copywriting, podcasting. Okay, let me look at podcasting. So 
for podcasting, it's going to be something around content creation. All right, cool. So what I'm going to do now, how do I, okay, so I don't know anything about podcasting. Now you have to understand that everything you want to learn, whether it's copywriting, whether it's podcasting, it has multiple angles. All right. There is the business of podcasting. There is also tools. What tools do I use for podcasting? There is also um, how do I get guests for my podcast? There are multiple areas of podcasting. So how do I know, you know, get a general idea and I figure out whether that is what I want to do. Now I'm going to open a website that we all know. I'm going to open a website that we all know. Okay, it's open. I'm now going to share my screen. Everybody knows this website, but you don't know that this is what the website can be used for. You don't know. Um, I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to share the screen. And shared. What do you see? YouTube. You guys didn't know. Look at me. I'm live on YouTube. 666 watching. Hey, whoa, 666. Are you people seeing this? Am I the only one seeing this? Say, John Obidi is live. Your next big move, 666. Someone should please join until I become 667. Hell, such an omen. Anyway, how can you use YouTube? Now, when you want to get a general idea of a topic, there is a way to use YouTube to get it. And that is by looking for panel discussions or summits. The reason why it's either a panel discussion or a summit is that they are on a summit or a panel discussion, they invite multiple speakers that come and share multiple perspectives, all in a short space of time. All right. See, so Cypran said, uh, I wasn't expecting YouTube. Yeah. Okay. So they usually, when it's a summit, or a, a panel discussion, they usually invite a number of guests that have to share their knowledge in a short space of time from diverse points of view. So when I say podcasting, I will come and search podcasting summit. All right, let's see what happens. So there's so many things, but I want a podcasting summit okay this is a tedx talk the power of podcasting i want a an actual event on podcasting let me see i'm going to look around There's so many let me see i want i'm looking for an actual event all right um let me see podcasting Events. Ah, it says podcasting events to attend. Let me see. Let me see. This one says how to use podcasts and events as marketing tools. Okay, this is uh this is a podcast. Okay, let me see. Can I get anything here? Let me see. Okay, I can't find this here. Um, let me see. Podcasting events. Uh, replay. Let me see. All right, let me see. Podcasting um, panel. Okay, here we go. Um, so this is Podcasters Roundtable. It's not quite a panel discussion like I was looking for. It's not quite what I was looking for, but it's also relevant because there is this Podcasters Roundtable, how to dominate podcasting. So I said that they have an actual, they have a channel. I'm going to right click and open. Okay, I can't right click and show you. So I'm going to click on this. I hope it doesn't play so that it doesn't give me a copyright strike. Okay. So here, should your plumber have a podcast, spending money on your podcast, 
So you can actually look, okay, these are the multiple ideas on podcasting, okay? This is one way of doing it, all right? Um, all right, another tool that we can use is amazon.com, all right? How to get the general idea, what to come into that? Amazon.com. Now, you'll wonder why I'm talking about Amazon. And I'll just search for podcasting, but, oh, please stop it. But I'm going to search in books. Where is the Kindle? Audibles, no. I'm looking for the Kindle store. Where is K? Kindle store. Yeah, so I'll search the Kindle store for podcasting. So I want to look for the, the top books, the best books on podcasting, first of all, okay? Now, note, just watch this. This is very important for you guys to note. Very important. Watch what I'm doing. This one says, uh, now, this one says, everybody has a podcast, a how-to guide from the first family of podcasting. Now, this is Justin McElroy and Travis, Travis McElroy. Now, how many, re, how many, this has five, a five-star rating, and it's gotten 459 reviews. So that's a very popular book. So I'm going to just note that, okay? Note that book. Let's look for any other book that has a high rating. Typically, I don't like to note the books that have a sponsored thing. I want the ones that organically have a high rating, okay? Um, this one says, podcasting, how to start a podcast and create a profitable podcasting business, okay? Pretty good, but it's, okay, and it's 206 reviews. That means it's popular, okay? Um, let's keep on going. Podcasting for dummies, 96. It's not bad. It's good, okay? Look at this one. Podcasting made simple, and it's how much? 260. Three. Now, when you find one that looks good, okay, what do you do? This one was the highest one here. Who is the author? Well, one of the authors is called Justin McElroy. I'm going to copy his name, okay, and head back to, um, okay, hold on. Let me just, I want to open my notepad real quick. So I can note their names because I'm not going to be, able to be able to come back to this screen just the way that you know StreamYard is is built. So hold on a sec. Let me copy this. I want to copy it into my notepad so that I can I won't have to come back here again. I'll just copy Justin McElroy. Then I'll copy this one, Amanda Mayo. Um, let me maybe, who else can I just take from here? Okay, this one says, make noise. Eric Newsom. I've never heard of these names, but that's cool. I'll just write them out. Then, uh, this NPR. NPR is a big stuff, but anyway, and I, I need personalities that we can dig up on, okay? Uh, this one says, Daniel Larson, okay? I'll take his name out, and then I'll just, okay, I want to take this guy, but only two reviews, not good enough. All right, now I'm going to head back to, no, no, Amazon. I'm going to head back to YouTube. Watch this. I'm going to head right back to the YouTube, and I'll drop in the first author. and see if he has been interviewed on any podcast. There we go. Justin McElroy, podcasting. There we go. Podcast tips and tricks from, from 10 years of podcasting full-time. And I think the guest is Justin McElroy. So I'm looking for everywhere this huge author has been interviewed, okay? So this is another one, how to podcast a Q&A with the McElroy family. I'm just, I'm not even, you know, before you even think of buying the book, look for everywhere this person has spoken on podcasting. So he's speaking here, but, you know, he's on something else. I'm not going to click this one. Uh, I'll just look for anywhere he has been 
interview. This one says, please learn from our podcasting F-ups, all right? Um, and so on. Look at this one. Okay, so I'll look for the ones that are significantly long enough from 30 minutes and above. All right, so here they are. This one is for three minutes. They were guests here. They were guests here too. This one is how many minutes? It's 34 minutes. Um, and yeah, that should be about it. So you can just watch their talks and get the general idea in this short amount of time without necessarily buying the book, okay? Let's check the next person on the list. Her name is Amanda Mayo. Let's see if she has been interviewed. Is this her? This is probably who she is. 10 podcasts you want to binge. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. This one says uh, video strategies. No, this is not her. Okay, maybe she is not really. Okay, here it is. Amanda Mayo. Yes, here it is. So the musical inner tube, volume two, number 15. It says, so you want to start a podcast? Well, lend an ear to this inner tube as Don and John talk with Amanda Mayo, who has made a career and so on and so forth. Okay, so Amanda Mayo was interviewed here. I would say I would listen to this to learn about podcasting. Okay, and so on and so forth. I think this is her because this is Amanda Muse. I don't know. This is probably her. So that is how I would use the combination of Amazon and YouTube to get the general idea. All right. But that's not all I'm going to use. Let me stop the share. There is another tool that I would. Um, there's another tool that I would use to get the general idea. And that is Spotify. All right. That is Spotify. So let's assume you have found the major icons or the major thought leaders in a particular field that you are interested in and you want to figure out what they know. Okay, so let me pick one, for example. Um, okay, pick an author. Tell me an author who is a, a great thought leader, but whose book you may not have the time to read. Give me a name in the comments. Let's use an example. All right. Give me a name in the comments. A well-known author that you admire, but you may not have the time to read his or her book. All right. Give me the name in the comments. Let me show you something. It says Tim Ferriss. Okay. Uh, but I want to know what, uh, what, okay. Tim Ferriss, maybe it was about the four hour work week. Okay. Um, okay. Someone says Simon Sinek. All right. Now I'm going to show you how I use, okay. So I'm seeing names, John Maxwell, Brian Tracy. Good. So uh, let's look, let's talk about Simon Sinek. Okay. Now I'm going to open my Spotify app and show you some magic. I'm going to show you some magic. All right. Give me a sec. Share. And this will work whether or not you're using Spotify. If you're using Apple Music, no, if you're using Apple Podcasts or Spotify or Google Podcasts, this is going to work just as well, okay? So, okay, I'm sharing my screen. I hope everyone can see my Spotify. Now, what I'm going to do, people think that Spotify is used for just music, but no, Spotify is what I use to binge on knowledge. I binge the heck out of this thing, man. So, someone says Simon Sinek. So, I'll come here and search for Simon Sinek. Are you wondering Why? Simon Sinek does not have, does not release music, <laughs> all right? But he has been featured on podcasts that are on Spotify. So I'll just search here and it was, you know, but after you search here, you now look for podcasts. Simon Sinek as an artist, no. Albums, no. Look for playlists, no. Podcasts. So we're going to look for everywhere Simon Sinek has been interviewed. We're not looking for his own podcast, no. Because I find out that most of them tend to give more value when they are a guest on other people's podcasts, okay? And especially when they've launched a new book, they tend to summarize the book in 45 minutes or an hour on that podcast, and you can get the general idea. So Simon Sinek has been interviewed here. No, I think this is his own thing, but here is where you know he has been interviewed. Okay, no, I don't think podcast is what I should look for. I should look for episodes, sorry. Here it is. So this is, um, young people need to hear this. Simon Sinek, Leadership Game Theory, Dare to Lead podcast with Brene Brown, where they interviewed Simon Sinek. Let me click on See All, and it's going to show me all episodes. 
You can see um, Tom Bilyeu with Impact Theory also interviewed Simon Sinek. Everywhere Simon Sinek has been interviewed, you are going to find it here, okay? People were asking about, uh, who else were asking about? Tim Ferriss. I'll just come here and type Tim Ferriss and hit enter. And I'll just scroll right down to episodes. I don't want to go to his own podcast. I want to see where he has been interviewed. So I'll come to episodes. And I'll click on see all. And you'll be able to, okay, this is his own podcast. And he has a lot. But I'll look for the ones where he has been, ep, he has been interviewed. So this is a podcast called Moon. Is it Moonshots? I don't know. But this is, he was um, interviewed on this. Let me click and see what it's about. Okay, this is, this is the Moonshots podcast, and Tim Ferriss was brought on as a guest to talk about the book, The 4-Hour Workweek. Another thing you can look at, too, is the time. The duration is one hour and four minutes. So he is being forced to give the best of this book in one hour and four minutes. So if you don't want to read the book, listen, listen to this podcast, and you'll probably get the whole gist for free, all right? And if you like, you can dive deeper into the whole book, but you'll get a general idea. You might also want to look for anywhere else he has given the same interview. I'll come here to books are great. This one says, okay, this one is not Tim Ferriss being interviewed. This is books are great. They, I think they are summarizing the four hour work week by Tim Ferriss. All right, so you can listen to all of this for free and so on and so forth. If you, you can type in the name of any great speaker or author and you should be able to find them there. Wait, one more thing I forgot to try. I wanted to see if I could search for my name and see what would come up. Let me search for a John Obidi. Let's see what John Obidi has been up to, man. Yeah, man. Let's see what John Obidi has been up to, man. Oh, my goodness, man. Is that John Obidi, man? Okay, let me go straight to episodes and click on see all. This will show you everywhere I've been interviewed. Oh, I've been interviewed on Earn Your Leisure. There is this episode that was 72 minutes long. Another one, 29 minutes long. Another one on the Honeypod, Five Questions with John Obidi. Another one um, with um, the Critic for More podcast. Uh, interviewed on this other one. I don't remember what this is, but it looks cool. Um, this was Drive with the Beer Release. I was interviewed here too. And the other ones, I don't remember these other ones, but okay. Yeah, so <laughs> that, that is a way to find everywhere that I have been interview so put anybody's name here and you will be sure to find it okay so that is um that is how to find it people are typing zig ziglar you can find anything there man anything so thank you marianne Ndu. thank you um she has kind of summarized this here tools you can use to get knowledge about a particular field that you know nothing about youtube amazon spotify you can use that to get the general idea the general idea now once you have been able to get a general idea say podcasting or anything you can now dive in through courses okay you can dive in through courses someone says yes, your internet is moving fast <laughs> the benefits of being outside the third world fence <laughs> great observation anyway um so that's that. Uh, where was I? So how do you now dive in? How do you now dive in? Okay. You can get onto courses where you can specialize. There's Coursera. There's Udemy. There is edX. There is OCW, which is online courseware. Um, hmm. Do I dive that deep into that? Okay. So there's Coursera. Coursera has a lot of courses, you know, but not quite a lot sometimes. But it has mostly specialized courses, especially when you're talking about things that are specialized like blockchain and artificial intelligence and stuff like that. Coursera has those kinds of courses. Udemy is also a, part, a fantastic one, you know, just that, you know, it's it might be paid for. You might need to pay money to get those courses there, but you might find some for free. edX, too, is very valuable. edX, someone please type the spelling down there. Um, then there is this thing called OCW. I don't think... I think the last time I mentioned OCW, there were a lot of people who did not, who were not um, a part of night school. So let me talk about OCW again, okay? OCW means open course where, all right? So the OCW consortium is a group of universities that have come together to agree to make their curriculum available online for free. 
All right. So the top universities in the world, and I'll just um, show you real quickly the fruit of OCW. If you are in the third world, you need to have this in your toolkit. Okay, no darling. If you're in the third world, you need to have this in your toolkit because this will enable you to have access to the very same curriculum that people are paying for in MIT, um, Yale, and other members of the OCW consortium. So I'm going to share my screen now and show you something about OCW and how you can access it for free. Where is it at? All right, so let me see. So it says open courseware. You can read this. It says there are course lessons created at universities and published for free on the internet. OCW projects first appeared in the late 90s and after getting traction in Europe and then the United States have become a worldwide means of delivering educational content. Okay, so you can access it. There's OCW in, the, in Colombia, Brazil, Mexico, United States even in Asia and all these other countries, Europe and so on. But I would like to focus on the United States. If I click the United States, you see all the universities that have their courses, including video lectures in the OCW consortium. So you have the MIT, you have uh, Carnegie Mellon, you have University of California, Berkeley, you've got Stanford, Princeton, University of Pennsylvania, University of Michigan, Harvard, Yale, Caltech, John Hopkins, University of California, and so on and so forth. I think the most popular one is MIT. I don't know if they were the ones who started it, but I know that they are, they are like pretty much the number one. Okay, so let me click on MIT and see what shows up. So MIT, oh, this is not what I'm looking for. Um, I'm looking for... Their site. Okay, so I'm going to go straight to the MIT OCW. So this says MIT Open Courseware. So you can go here and open all, you know, as many courses as they have available. So this, you can see principles of microeconomics, for example. I can click on this, it's video. I can click on this and it talks about, it gives me details on this course. You know, the instructor is Professor Jonathan Gruber and so on and so forth. I can click on video lectures. Let's see, lecture one, introduction to supply and demand. I'll click on this. Um, what, 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 are you gonna play or not? Okay, cool. So I'm gonna hit play and uh, YouTube, please don't block my video. This is just for educational purposes. Okay, cool. So you can see that it's working and um, you might not hear the audio. Okay, but it's actually working. So you can watch all the lectures in this particular course, okay? Principles of microeconomics and so many others, okay? So this is the MIT. I think it's the most popular one and the one I've gotten the most value from actually. So let me put the URL in the comments so that you can have that too. So I just put it in the comments. Um, where is it? So that's the URL there if you want to access um, MIT OCW. And for those of you who are parents too, or maybe your kids are in Nigerian universities and you want to en enlarge their study, you know, get them onto this MIT OCW. OCW, it is totally free of charge, okay? Totally free of charge. Someone said, do we get a certificate after the lectures? I don't think so. I think the OCW is about the knowledge, okay? Michael said, I always watched OCW lectures while studying physics on campus. Niger lectures were teaching what, what I couldn't decode. Yeah, very good. So that's a way of supplementing, okay? Um, DigiCreate, thank you for summarizing them. Coursera, Udemy, edX, and OCW. OCW, all right? So I just gave you those ones. Now, um, now this, this part of the... Of, the broadcast is about how to dive in. Once you found what you want, how to dive in. So these are the ones that will help you to actually specialize so that you can get good at what you're studying, at what you're trying to learn, and finding out what your next big thing could be. Now, there's one tool that everybody uses. 
but you don't quite know how to use, all right? And because of time, I'm not going to dive into how to use the tool, but I'll mention it. That tool is called Twitter. Personally, I don't tweet very often, even though I have a ton of followers on there. I don't tweet very often. I use Twitter mostly as a learning and listening tool. Now, Twitter has two features that people underutilize because they don't know it's there. The number one tool of Twitter that you should be using is the lists feature, all right? Now, here's how I recommend you do it. Create a new Twitter account that you use just for listening. Now, the, the, the new updates, I don't know how new it was, but the, 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 the new updates on the Twitter app enables you to, to sign into multiple Twitter accounts on one device. So you don't have to log out and log back in. So create a new Twitter account that is just for listening. And that's maybe because you have people that you are following in the Nigerian space or whatever space that you're in, you don't want to unfollow them. And, you know, but trust me, the people you are following right now could be a distraction for where you are going. You will get caught up in when you were having all this banter that is none of your business. You'll get caught up in it again and trending issues, all right? Keep that your regular Twitter account to one side. Create a new one that may not even have your name. It's just for learning. And what you're going to do, once you're creating your new Twitter account, it's going to ask you to subscribe to topics. Okay, that Twitter topics is a new feature. So even if you, are, you don't know who to follow, you can subscribe to specific topics, whether it's on blockchain, on, on AI, on business, on finance, whatever it's at. You can subscribe to topics. And the best thought leaders that are tweeting about that topic will begin to show up in your feed. And then you can know who to follow and start populating your news feed with the relevant information that you need to see. What this will help you do is that it will help you stay immersed in what you are trying to learn. So know that today you are you are getting better at e-commerce and then somebody tweets about, hey, so what happened in Big Brother Niger today? And see, this focus game, you've got to be intentional about it. If your brain has been, re has been wired in the past to, re to respond to anything that happens has to do with entertainment or Big Brother Niger, you cannot control yourself. You are not as strong as you think you are. You are naturally going to be like, oh, it's, it's not going to take me. It's not going to take me two minutes just to what they are saying. And then you, you, your, your mind shifts. You click and you see, and next thing you are seeing what somebody replied. Next thing you are seeing them tagging somebody, and you have spent forty-five minutes down that rabbit hole, lost focus that will never be gotten back again. So that is why you need a clean feed that has nothing but what you are trying to gain competence at. There are fantastic brains that are always sharing about how to make money online on, with Shopify, with e-commerce, uh, with, um, with mobile apps, or with, with, with blogging, all right? You will find them there. But you've got to be, you, your feed has to be immersed with just them and nothing else. You don't want to know what David Doe or Whiskey are doing. You don't want to know what BBN Nigeria is doing. You don't know what's happening with the, with the English Premier League. You don't, want know, you don't want to know what is happening anywhere else outside the boundaries of your domain. Now, once in a while, when you want to go and swim in Nigerian Twitter again, you can log into an Nigerian Twitter account and then see what is happening there. My guess is that when you do this for a while, you'll get sick of your old Twitter account. Trust me, it happens all the time because your mind will have been so elevated that when you visit the internet space that you used to be exposed to in the past, you'll be disgusted at your previous self, all right? So this is a huge tool. And then if you can use the Twitter lists functionality, you can further categorize your learning. You can create lists for the different categories of things you're trying to learn and add different thought leaders to those lists so that you can help you further categorize that, okay? So that is what I would... Uh, I would recommend that you do. I do this. I have like five Twitter accounts that don't have my name. <laughs> so nobody can even see, can even know who I am following. <laughs> you, 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 I know some of you will go to my, my Twitter account and see, oh, who, who's Jonah Bidi following? People that I'm following, you, that I'm really following and learning from, you can't know them because I have, I have brand new Twitter accounts that has like zero followers. <laughs> You're right. You will never know. 
Okay, so this is what you can do, and also so that maybe if you are in if you are in a, if you are in a field where it's very competitive, right? And I'm giving you some game now. If you're in a field that is very competitive and you feel like people are going to be copying your every move and you want them to be proprietary, what you can do, you know, what this method will help you because when you create a new Twitter account, all these stalkers don't go and see everybody that you are following. All right. They will follow your normal Twitter account and see who they think you are following. Meanwhile, you are enjoying your learning in peace in a private Twitter account. Okay? And this is easily doable if you are using the mobile app because you can have multiple and just switch, 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 switch. Okay? Fantastic. Um, Mr. Influential said something interesting that I want to respond to. He said, I think they should not be limited to Twitter alone. Uh, Facebook and Instagram too. Following great minds on Facebook and Instagram will give you a great feel too. Okay, good. That is a great observation. But I don't like Instagram um, for the purpose of learning. Instagram is not a very good place to learn. And I know that you do get some learning done on Instagram, but Instagram is not optimized for learning. Instead of Instagram, I would recommend you replace Instagram with YouTube if learning is your goal. And on, I know you will say, oh, but what about, you know, I've learned a lot from Reels and so on. Trust me, with one hour with, with you will learn more from a focused one hour youtube video than a 15 second instagram reel trust me tell me what you've learned from the last 10 reels you watch on instagram now trust me you, you cannot remember because instagram was not built for memory retention it was built for dopamine and fresh and newness newness swipe 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 entertainment instagram was initially created for entertainment and it's optimized for short form entertainment, not learning. Learning is just a hack. It's not a part of the initial um, purpose of Instagram. But YouTube, YouTube is optimized for learning. So if you want to do this, do it on YouTube. The thing about Instagram is, listen, get this thing, guys. Instagram makes money from your distraction. So don't think you want to be wiser than those who made Instagram. There are people that have PhDs, psychologists. They know you more than you know yourself. And their major job is figuring out how to distract you. They don't care about whether you reach your goals. It's not their KPI. I want to know whether this guy reaches his goals or whether this girl is achieving her dreams. No, that's not their KPI. Their KPI is how do I keep her on this app for as long as possible so we can monetize her eyeballs, her attention. And so they know the kind of content to promote and push to the fore, the kind that makes you tap impulsively. So that is why even though you might come to Instagram with the intent to learn, a lot of time gets wasted there without your knowledge. Like an hour later, you're like, oh my God, I got lost in the, in the, in the explore section. You know, the explore section used to be the bottomless pit before, but they've innovated such that if you just tap on one reel, maybe you see somebody that you like, you tap on that person's reel just to watch that reel, when that reel is done, it moves up and something else just shows up next. Why? Instagram is optimized for distraction. And they want to optimize every minute they can keep your eyeballs there. So even if you came there to watch one video, they will show you another one. And you are not strong enough. Believe me when I say you're not strong enough. Don't deceive yourself. All right? They want you to deceive yourself. I can, I can do it. I have willpower. You don't have willpower. They know book past you. They know you more than yourself. Did you, did you study psychology? They study psychology. They will beat you at the game of managing your brain, your own brain again. So forget it. Instagram is not for learning, okay? You might learn a thing or two there, but focus your learning on YouTube and the other ones that are longer form like Coursera and um, OCW. But YouTube, because, you know, it's it's free and there's, there's a ton there, All right? Um, Facebook, too, is a great one because there are also um, Facebook... Um, there are also Facebook groups that you can join that are focused on a particular conversation. So like Edirin Edewa, for example, has a Facebook group for authors. Um, I have a Facebook group here South Africa for personal development and business um, and so on. There are other people too who have their Facebook groups that are focused. Uh, there is also um, Stella Owala who has a Facebook group for people who want to travel abroad. You know, and so there are all these groups that are niche and are focused on specific conversations. I would pick any of these platforms over Instagram. I love Instagram for certain reasons, but when it comes to learning and being an expert, no, Instagram will rob you. They're going to rob you of your time, and they're, they're, they're all about the money. They're messing with you. Okay. 
Um, so that is about that. Now, there is one thing that I want to share with you guys here that I have only shared with members of my inner circle and maybe in one of my other courses. And it is um, how to find your next big move through travel. Okay, how to find your next big move through travel. Now, those of you who are members of my Facebook community, how do I um, get this thing back? Those of you who are members of my Facebook community, you may have heard me say a lot of times that young people who are just, you know, trying to figure out their lives and so on, do not waste, ah, tough to say, uh, because our friends in the industry, anyway, um, do not waste your money on um, travel tourism. Don't waste your money on tourism. I know what I'm saying. There are, those of you that have hammered and you are blown, fine. Knock yourselves out. Go and do tourism. But those of you who are still trying to find your foundation, I know they've made tourism seem so aspirational. Keep that money. Hold it down. Hold it. Because when they come back and Sakma hold you, you wish you had that money. All right? Now, I'm not saying don't travel, but I'm saying you can use that same travel to find your next big move. There is a way to do it. Now, one of the ways to do to, one of the ways is by using a tool that is by using a tool that a lot of people know, but not in this context, okay? Let me open the tool so you guys know. All right. So some of you who are able to travel, you're able to travel to certain countries. You can use travel to discover your next big move. So it's not for you to travel to Dubai, for example, and start riding camel. No, that's not why you are there. You are in Dubai or wherever you're traveling to, to figure out how you can tap into the wealth of knowledge in that place because everybody comes to Dubai. And I'm just using Dubai as an example. It could be the United States. It could be the UK wherever it is, all right? There's a website you can use, and that website is called Eventbrite. I've mentioned this a few times. For those of you who are new, this is what you should look at, okay? So here's the thing. Let me share my screen and show you this fantastic tool and how to use it to figure out your next best, your next big move. So here is Eventbrite, okay? Eventbrite is a website that shows you events happening all over the world, okay? I'm in the United Arab Emirates, so I'm always using Eventbrite to look for events happening around me so that I can meet people and build my connections and my networks, okay? So if I'm trying to learn about something like this, one, this is the Financial Expo, I want to know people in the industry one-on-one. -on -one. I've realized that there are some, there's some information that you will never find on YouTube there are some geniuses all over the world that will never write books. They will never be found on podcasts. They are just comfortable being low-key and making their money. You can only tap into the wealth of knowledge that they have by meeting them in person. They are usually not even the speakers. They are usually just attendees at, this, at these events. So when I attend, I tend to meet attendees, not even speakers, okay? So what you can do on Eventbrite is you look, you think about a country you are, wherever you are traveling, maybe for tourism, and you hit this drop-down menu, and you can search anywhere in the world, okay? And then when you search for the location, you also type what you want to search about. You can search for finance, okay? And if I hit enter, you'll, you'll see events in the United Arab Emirates that have to do with finance, okay? Here it is. There's an awards dinner. There's a finance for non-finance. There's, there's all kinds of things. You can use this for any industry. And the beautiful thing is that most of these events are free. Most of them are free. And anyone that is paid, usually they're not more than $99, all right? So that is how to use that to find your next big move. You meet people, exchange contact and find a way you can have um, partnerships and you know, franchising opportunities and so on um, and so on, okay? Now, um, how do you analyze the value chain of an idea? Because every idea 
has multiple value chains. I think I need to actually, I think, hold on a sec. I think I need to have a different nice cool episode on breaking down value chains in any industry, okay? But let me just breeze through it real quick, okay? So when I say value chain, the summary of value chain, even though that's not what it fully means, is where is the money in this thing, okay? Where is the money, right? Where is the money? So that is what I mean by analyzing the value chain in that industry. How is the money made, okay? So anything you are trying to look for, um, say... Uh, Elijah, Elijah, just, Elijah, Elijah is the only one that is spray me money. Just spray me money here, right? You should spray me money. Yo. Don't try me. Elijah is the only one spraying me money. He's the only one that loves me on this broadcast. Anyway, how is the money being made? Okay, so normally, let's say you are going into something like, okay, let's say cryptocurrency, for example, because cryptocurrency is, 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 is all the rage right now, right? You don't need to be trading cryptocurrency to make money from that industry. There are different aspects of the value chain, okay? Yes, some people will make money from trading. Some people will make money from, you know, decentralized finance. Some will make money from staking and all that. But there are other aspects of it too you can, you can, you can look into. There are some people in the cryptocurrency industry that only make money by holding cryptocurrency events. That is all they do in that in that industry. So they hold, they are fantastic at organizing events. They organize, they call the thought leaders, put them on stage, monetize the whole thing, charge tickets, sell the recordings, and they monetize events. That's all they do. They don't know anything about cryptocurrency, but they are juggernauts at organizing events on cryptocurrency. Or some people just focus on being a media platform. So they are not experts at cryptocurrency, but they focus on becoming reporters, news reporters. So what happened on cryptocurrency? We heard recently that uh, Shiba Inu coin just went to the moon. Can you break it down and analyze and, you know, maybe interview someone who knows more about this situation and put it on your blog or on your podcast or on your YouTube channel? That's the media arm of cryptocurrency. And this is in every industry. In what is the business of cryptocurrency or e-commerce? or online marketing, some people just focus on creating a media company out of that industry. And you get paid. How do you get paid? You can get paid through banner ads. You want to use AdSense on your blog, or you want to you want to put it on, have YouTube videos and get paid with YouTube monetization. Or, I mean, how many of you, when you clicked to watch me on this on this um, broadcast, you saw a YouTube video ad, all right? Because my channel is monetized. So imagine if you were holding a live show where all you talked about was e-commerce or cryptocurrency, and you don't know anything about cryptocurrency, but you're always bringing guests on cryptocurrency and interviewing them and giving all that value to your audience. That is a fantastic way of building a media company out of that. Maybe one of these days, I will even give you a whole episode on how to build a media company, all right? Because that it's a whole big terrain okay so you can also choose to express that if you don't want to use that you can use podcasting just that podcasting is a bit if it's just audio podcasting it's a bit harder to monetize it's possible but it's a bit harder to, to monetize but if you can do it as a video podcast good it's easier to monetize because while you're figuring out do i want to put out products or services and consulting you can at least start monetizing youtube videos as you as you get bigger okay so you can choose to have that media platform. Another one is digital products. You can choose to sell, you know, and, and monetize using digital products. You can also choose to monetize using physical merchandise. There are physical merchandising. There are some fields that have a lot of, you know, physical, have, that have a lot of um, um, merchandise that people can buy. Like, let's say you are in the field of weight loss or fitness. You don't have to create an online course on fitness. Not everybody will be successful at creating an online course. Some of you are just so good at trading and selling stuff. So what if you can import stuff from, import stuff from China, AliExpress, brand it, and then resell with your own online store? That is So there are different aspects of the value chain that people can monetize. It doesn't have to be one. It doesn't have to be digital products. Everybody just focusing on online courses, but not everybody has the spirit of online courses. There are some people who have the charisma like me, yeah, and they will succeed 
with online courses because they have that charisma to guide people along and really teach something. But there are some people too who don't know that they have the superpower to go into physical merchandising. Me, I don't get the strength or the mental bandwidth to be doing physical merchandising, but somebody else can pick that up and run with it. Okay, there are some fields that have to do with that. Okay, so that might be for somebody here. And of course, you've got to learn. And remember at the beginning, I said skills of the new economy. If you can't program, you should at least be able to put together what you know. If you go back to the beginning and start at watch afresh, if you didn't catch that, okay? Then there's also services and consulting, all right? There's also services and consulting. Um, and so you can render services if you don't want to do online courses and all that. You can render services within that field. You can render consulting and so on, all right? So, so that is how to analyze the value chain. So you look at the value chain, like you're talking about podcasting, for example. Not everybody will, you know, create an online course on podcasting. You might say that, you know what, I want to focus on selling podcasting equipment in my name. Podcasting mics, um, you know, tripods, um, lights, for those who want to go, you know, I want to sell equipment. You know, I will import on AliExpress and sell on my online store, drop ship, or actually hold inventory. That could be your thing. You might help people set up their podcast, okay? Or you can even create your online course on podcasting, right? Or you can be that media platform and say, this is the podcasting blog. Come here to learn the trips and techniques of podcasting. Or you can create a, a YouTube show that interviews the best podcasters on what their tips, techniques for monetizing their podcast. Um, could be, I mean, it's a lot of things here. Just analyze the value chain and figure out where you can fit in. Now, there are three books I want to recommend for you to help you accelerate your learning, okay? And even if you are not here, you miss this. If you're on my email list, I always send out an email to my list every single when? Um, every single Sunday by 7 p.m., so if you're on my email list, you're going to get this. I'm going to send you this whole list of things that you need so you can easily store it in your notepad or something. But here are three books um, that you need. But let me put the link to my email list in case you are not on the email list. Where is that? Here it is. Um, Jonabili.blog forward slash newsletter. Okay, so I'm going to be sending this to you, you know, this step by this note to you here, okay? So three books I'm going to recommend for you guys. Um, number one, no, it's not, this one's not a book. Oh. Um, okay, there's one book called The Creative Edge. Let me check my Kindle real quick. I need to be sure that that's the title of the book. But it has the creative something in it. But there's this book you need to learn, so you need to have, so it can accelerate your learning. I know it has creative, the creative curve. That's the title. The creative curve by Alan Gannett. All right. Let me create. Um, let me correct myself here. If anybody can just type it out, I'll be grateful, please. The creative curve by. Allen, like Allen Avenue, Allen Gannett. Gannett is spelled G A double N E T T. Okay. Then the second one is the Creativity Checklist. Oh my goodness, this book is a bomb. If if this it, based on this book alone, you should just be throwing offering at me right now. It's fantastic. It's a bit old, but it's fantastic. The Creativity Checklist, the eleven step system that instantly pulls million dollar ideas out of your head. All right, it's written by Tim Castleman. But don't worry, I'll send you all these authors and the links to their books on the newsletter that will go out on Sunday, okay? But I'm just reading them out to you. So number one is The Creative Curve uh, by Alan Gannett. Number two is a book, The Creativity Checklist, the 11 step system that instantly pulls million dollar ideas out of your head by Tim Castleman. Um, and then, and then Zero to One by Peter Thiel. Zero to One by Peter Thiel. Those are three books. Um, hold on. And then I'll recommend some videos for you to watch. 
this will be your homework. Nice cool people. This will be your homework. Um, right, one, two, I don't want to miss anyone because I'm, I'm going to send it to you guys by email. So it, it, it can be a weekend assignment. All right. And then I'm going to comment two videos. Okay. There's a man named Naval Ravikant. He did a series titled How to Build Wealth. All right, how to build wealth. Everybody needs to watch that series. Just go to YouTube and search Naval, like Naval, like Naval, N-A-V-A-L, Naval, how to build wealth, okay? And watch, is a YouTube series. Watch that YouTube series. It's going to um, change your life, trust me. Just forget everything you've heard from motivational speakers or elsewhere on money. Forget it. You're going to learn the foundational principles from a billionaire. I think it's a billionaire. And how to um, build wealth. He put it out there for free. And, you know, it's out there. Millions of views changing lives. So watch that. And then uh, that's one video. The second video I recommend for you is, if you're on my email list, you know what this video is. Because I sent you guys this video um, last week on my email newsletter. The video is, competition is for losers. And that is a video, I think it's about two to three hours long by Peter Thiel, the, per the, the man who wrote Zero to One. He's a billionaire also. You know, billionaires don't need money from book sales. So when they talk about money or business, you should pay attention, all right? Uh, but anyway, these particular ones are the ones I have um, looked at, and they're fantastic, okay? So, oh, thank you very much. So that's the video series, Naval. He put out a video series called How to Build Wealth. Just go through every single thing there and then um, um the creative curve by alan garnett okay but that's not spelled garnett there's no e at the end of garnett but thank you bio francis thank you um let me see then zero to one is a book by peter thiel thank you the thank you veria verla the creativity checklist by tim castleman very good um let me see which one again competition is for losers this is a video like a three-hour video it was a lecture he was given at stanford university that they recorded and put on youtube fantastic video competition is for losers thank you um Ozzy baby competition is for losers okay so these are some resources i want you guys to take away from this um now like I said, everybody needs um, a, a particular super power, okay? Uh, let me, where is my newsletter? Everybody needs these superpowers. And, and usually, there's something I do once in three months or so called the OBW, Online Business Weekend. I've not done a new episode ever since, but we're going to be launching a new cohort of Online Business Weekend. Now, what is Online Business Weekend? I teach you how to create any idea from scratch using a lot of tools that are either free or very cheap. And in one weekend, we are able to build out an entire idea live in front of your eyes. So we're going to put in another cohort. Um, subscribe to the newsletter so that you will know exactly when we launch. And then what else? Join the Telegram channel too. I give timely information right there in the telegram channel okay so how many of you want to be in that new cohort you want to be in that new cohort where i spend three days with you on zoom it's private on zoom if you're not there live you'll have access to the recordings and we'll show you how to use all these tools to reflect any big idea on the internet for very cheap for less than a hundred dollars you can create an internet company in 2021 it doesn't cost as much as people say it does but i'm going to be launching that pretty soon again um, you guys just watch out for it. Make sure that you are on the Telegram channel and you are also on the mailing list because it's going to go out there. It's a live bootcamp. It's not an online course. It's going to be a live bootcamp. I'm going to be with you, teaching you step by step. Guys, this has been a fantastic two hours plus. I'm trying to get my broadcast to two hours max. Usually, we used, used to do three and four hours before, but I'm trying to discipline myself now to give as much value as I can in two hours. I'm a long form speaker, workshop style. So it tends to go really long. I'm gonna leave this video as usual up for those who wanna watch the replay. But listen, 
The reason I insist you guys come and watch live is so that you don't procrastinate. There are some people that say that, hey, you know, oh, I'll watch the replay later. And three months pass that you don't watch that replay. And the idea you should have taken action on immediately, it passes you by because those like Big Brother and Niger will steal that idea from your head. Your attention goes somewhere else. So the reason you have to come and watch live is that you can just tick off your Friday night. Say on Friday, I am coming to learn live and I don't need to come and watch the replay again. No need to procrastinate. Just come here, sit down, watch it live, get what you can, make your notes. And so you don't have to come back here again. You don't, oh, let me come back and watch. But when you come back to watch, and you, do, you look at the, the time, oh, two hours. Oh, you will never have time. Some of you that are parents, oh, I don't know, I'll spend two hours watching. It's, it's going to be tough for you, okay? So just come here live, watch it once and for all, and go out there and implement, all right? So thank you guys for watching. I don't want to take your time any longer. Let me just answer two questions. I'll take two questions before I leave and release you guys and call it a night. Quick one, for those of you who are not in my Facebook group, make sure you head over to Facebook and join my Facebook group. It's called Head Start Africa with John O'Biddy, okay? Someone's, someone is asking for the link to my newsletter. It is right there at the on your screen. It's johnobiddy.blog forward slash newsletter, okay? I'm going to send you some, some, um, some notes from this session, like some key points from this session and further study things that will help you um boost your learning thank you very much olivia on nosike three book recommendations the creative curve um the creativity checklist zero to one and then two videos to watch um naval ravikant how to build well thank you very much but naval's um naval ravikant is, is ravikant is with a k okay thank you so much how to build wealth i know that we wanted to type more but there was no space um, Edima, Eketi, Edima, Ete, good to see you again. Yes, watching live is always better. So you can just go out there and take action. Okay. Okay. No questions. Even me, I want to. I want to go to bed because I've been talking for two hours straight now. No questions. That's fine. Um, I will see you guys next week. So guys, if you're coming here for the first time, this is night school with John Obidi, and I just talked about. Your next big move, people are thinking about the ember months approaching or that have approached and the year has come to an end and you're thinking about how to maximize what you are doing or you want to switch paths, you want to pivot, but you don't know what it is to do. And so you need ideas or you need a proven framework that can help you and lead you into discovering what your next big move could be. And that is what this episode was all about. So come back here and replay. I understand the reason we don't have as many live viewers is that we now let you guys watch the replay and that's okay i mean i mean when we're being brutal with you guys and removing the replays you guys are coming to watch all live but it's okay people are busy they've got schedules that's cool but watch this as many times as you need to and i hope that this video um this entire two-hour lesson helps you in no small way in discovering your next best move one more time make sure you are in our telegram channel that's the url right there Make sure you are also in my email list. That's the URL right there. Make sure that you like this video and subscribe to this, to this uh, YouTube channel and uh, hit the bell notification icon so you get notified on new videos and every time we go live. Also, we have a new home for Night School on Instagram and that is called Night School TV underscore. Follow Night School TV underscore and also follow me on Instagram at Jonah BD. I don't post that often on my personal feed, but... My Instagram stories can be an interesting experience and an expose into the way that I think and the way I see the world sometimes. All right, guys. So until the next time uh, I come your, your way again, until the next time that I catch you here on Night School, you know what it is. Use, use what you have. For what you have is plenty and make the rest of your life the best of your life. God bless you. <laughs>